I did a video on deploying a Nitro API to the cloud and showed how we can deploy this to Azure. A few of you have asked how we can do the same on AWS. So let's go and take a look at the quickest way we can get our Nitro API up and running inside AWS. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio Code and this is the server API that I've used previously. So it's just in our server roots API and we've got a posts TypeScript file that returns basically a static set of posts. So simulating a blog API. So let's go and see how we can get this up and running. So the first thing we need to do is build it for use on AWS. So we need to go to our Nuxt config and inside the Nitro part of the config, we need to make sure that we add in the preset so that this builds for AWS Lambda. So we save that. And then we can do an NPM run build. And we can see that that builds us an output folder and a server folder within that. And what we're looking for to make sure that we've built the right thing is to look inside the index.mjs and we're looking for this line here to see that there is a handler that uses or is ready for AWS Lambda. So we need to get this ready for deploying into AWS. So let's go over to the output server folder and I'm in a PowerShell terminal here, um, but you might want to use something different, but to do it in PowerShell, we need to create a zip archive basically of the output server folder. So everything in this folder downwards, we need to zip up so that we can upload that into AWS. So that's what this compress archive does is it takes everything from the folder that we're in down and creates me an API zip folder. So we compress that up. And incidentally, if you are on Windows and you're using the PowerShell from within VS Code, then you need to make sure that you're using the right version. So we can do that using the PS version table. And you want to make sure that you're using version 7.26. By default on Windows, you'll be using version five. And I've got another video on how to upgrade the PowerShell version inside VS Code. So I'll put a link to that above and you can go and check that out so that you're on the right version. If you don't do that, then the folder structure gets um, messed up inside the, the zip archive is all that happens. It still works, but it just doesn't look as nice inside of the AWS console. So speaking of the AWS console, we can now that we've got our zip file, we can come over to the AWS Lambda console and we can create ourselves a brand new function. So we can select to create an, a Lambda function. We can select author from scratch and we can start punching in some of this information. So we can use something like my Nitro API. We can run on node 16 and you need to make sure that this version of node that you're running on matches what you've got locally. So you can use node minus V to do that. So just to show that node version I've got over here is 16.15. So I'm okay to use 16.x inside of AWS. Uh, whether you're using x86 or ARM architecture, uh, I'm going to go for x86. It does work on ARM as well. Let's create some permissions. So let's create a new role with basic Lambda permissions. And we don't need anything from the advanced settings, so we can create the function. So now that we've got the Lambda function there, we can select upload from and pick our zip file. So we go and browse to that. There's our zip file that we just created. So let's upload that and save that. And then you see basically the whole of that output server folder is now imported into AWS correctly with the folders as we want them. And we can jump over to the configuration tab on here, go to function URL 
and create a function URL. We can select auth type of none. So let's save that. And there is our function URL. So we can navigate to that and then go for slash API slash posts. And we can see that we get our posts coming back from our API. So our API is up and running. And like we did before, you can give it a specific post to return the post ID 25, for instance. And we can also return the comments just against post ID 25. So the post ID is the same. So that shows that our API is up and running and we haven't needed to install the AWS server application model or any AWS VS code extensions, no Docker, no AWS CLI. This is as quick and as fast as you can get an API up and running and being able to call it as you want to on AWS. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.